Thanks, Alyssa. Hi, I'm JC Fry. I'm the director of the Carney Center for International Student Services at Minnesota State Mankato. Um, I've been here for just over four years, and um, I think that this is so far in my career in higher ed been my favorite place to work. We have um, a ton of international students and a great community that um, is super happy to see that international enrollment grow and it is a super fun place to get your degree. So I'm excited to talk to you about the next steps that you need to take so that you can get here and join us. Yeah, I agree with everything JC said. So I'm Alyssa Morrison. Uh, you get a lot of emails from me. Um, I'm the assistant director for strategic communication. So I like to send you communication. I've worked in this office for a little over two years and it's been really awesome. When you get to campus, you're, you're gonna love it here. Um, we have over 1,100 students from 95 different countries. Our staff really cares about you. Um, I think I can probably name about 800 of those students when I see them. So we care about you and we want you here. So. Yeah, that's the reason we're having this today is to answer your questions. Um, I work with our student workers that many of you have spoken to on the phone or on WhatsApp or through email. And we know that you have a lot of questions about your I-20s. Um, so today we're gonna talk about how to request your I-20. And then we're gonna talk about the timeline of when you can expect to receive it. And then after that, we'll open it up to Q and A. Um, so, JC, would do you want to talk about how to request an I twenty, or would you like me to talk about it? Um, I think if you are you able to share your screen so you can show them like where they find the location of requesting. I can. That's awesome. So while you pull that up, maybe I can talk a little bit about that. Perfect. So, in order to get your I twenty, you have to initiate. Um, you know, by letting us know that you're ready for it. And um, we do all of this electronically. And if you've already submitted your I-20 request for us for spring, and you've, um, you know, deferred your admission or you're just admitted for spring, and you've already submitted it, great, that's awesome. You have found out, um, or you figured out where that link is, or you found it in your email, that's great. Alyssa's gonna show you here um, where you can request your I-20. Yeah, so if you've lost that email with the link or you just don't feel like going through your inbox to find it, I get it. Um, we have it available on our website. So if you go to mankato.mnsu.edu slash international, it'll bring you to the Kearney Center's website. There's also a ton of other good information on here, including information about things we're doing for COVID-19 um, and mitigating the risk for you all. Um, but what you're going to go to is this section here that says forms. You'll click on the purple button. And here, this is a whole resource and forms area for you. So there's a lot of information here. We also have weekly newsletters that go out to students. So if you want to know what's going on on campus, you can even check those out. But you'll follow it to forms. Again, just keep pressing forms. And right on top here is the I-20 request for new students. So when you click there, it will bring you to this form. And so all of this information is really important for us to confirm what needs to go on your I-20. I know that some of you may feel like you've given us this information in your application, or you've indicated it to us in some other way. But this form is what our I-20 processor looks at to ensure that every part of your I-20 is accurate. Do you wanna add anything to that, JC? Um, I would like just to reiterate the, um, you know, in, in the US, we, we go first name first. Um, surname last, right? And it might be different from where you are. So pay really a close attention to the boxes you're filling out um, because we need this to, to 
match how it looks on your passport. You want all of your documents to be the same in the same order that your name is given, spelt the same. Um, we do verify and look at your passport, but um, we also want to just make sure that um, everything is perfect for you. So like Alyssa said, you feel like I've already filled this out on my application or I've already given you this on my financial affidavit. Yes, but this is the, the last time. This is the really important time where you indicate to us if you're going to study at the bachelor's level or the grad level, if you are going to bring a spouse or a kid with you, um, or if you're studying in the U.S. already on an F1 record or you're just finishing OPT, all of those pieces are super important for us to give you the right I-20 so you can get here. Yeah, um, I know one question we get a lot from students as well is, can I change my major after you've applied and put your major on there? Yes, and that's a big reason in this form we have you fill a lot of this information out again. So if you've decided to change your major, um, we confirm all of those things on this form. So yes, we're, we're just double and triple checking so that you, the first I-20 you get has everything correct on it. And we don't have to keep going back and forth. You'll notice on here section two, it says how you want to receive your I-20 documents. So as of today and, pro and for the foreseeable future, you will get your I-20 from us electronically. Um, the US government has approved this method of us delivering the I-20 to you um, because of COVID. So um, it doesn't matter what you select here, we're going to send it to you electronically regardless. And it will have our electronic um, signature on it and it will come to you with a password. So no worries, um, you will not get anything in the mail. It'll come to your inbox in your email. Yeah, um, I know some of you have indicated that you have gotten a visa appointment or you are going to get one soon. I've actually just launched a poll here for you to tell us if you've gotten that visa appointment. So the beauty of doing it electronically right now is once we have the I-20 processed and ready to go, it gets to you immediately. It doesn't have to go through that shipping process, doesn't have to be picked up by the DHL man or anything. It comes straight to your inbox. Um, so it's very important that you're checking your email every day so that you make sure that you don't miss it. And then also make sure that you're giving us the right email. Sometimes we see that students apply with a certain email address and then they change it or they don't check that one. So make sure whichever email address you used on your application is the one that you're going in and checking for all of these documents. All right, it looks like a couple of you have visa appointments, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so once you submit this form, I believe they get a confirmation email that it's been submitted, right? Yes. Um, and if anything needs to be clarified, our I-20 processor will reach out to you as well. So if she has questions, she'll email you to make sure she gets them answered. Um, I'm just going to check the q and I'm going to see if there's any questions specifically about this form. Okay, no, we'll address these questions at the end that I see. All right. Should we talk about the timeline? Yes, I was just gonna yeah. say that. Cool. So um, the beginning of the fall semester is always really busy because we're still finishing up getting our new students um, settled, right? So we are now into the spot of our fall semester to really focus on these I-20s. So if you have submitted an I-20 request form already and you're waiting, you will have it in your um, inbox no later than October 1st and, uh, and likely much sooner than that. Um, Pam, our document processor, is continuously processing these documents every day and she ships out or emails out a handful um, you know, every morning and every afternoon. So like Alyssa mentioned, please keep checking your email because it will likely hit your inbox before October 1st. 
If you've not submitted your I-20 request form, I suggest you do that as soon as possible and um, you'll be thrown right into the queue. You could even have your I-20 by October 1st and if not, it will be shortly after. We understand that there's urgency and that you're really eager to set up your visa appointment um, and we are doing our best to get that document to you so that you're able to um, continue working towards that goal of getting here. Casey, could you talk a little bit about if a student has deferred and they have a fall I-20, so a program start date on their I-20 in August, can they still use that I-20 or do they need to request a new one? Great question. You have to actually request a new I-20. So if you were admitted for fall and you couldn't get ready, you didn't take classes online, and you're um, just going to start your program in spring, you have to request your deferment of both your admission and your I-20. You need to have a document in your hand when you enter the U.S. that has a program start date in the future. It needs to say January of 2021 if you're coming here in January. You'll get stopped at the border and likely turned around to send back home if you're trying to enter on an old I-20. So please make sure you've got a, um, an accurate one. And some of you may have deferred your application to spring and you're still getting communication that maybe your application is incomplete um, or you know you haven't gotten that final acceptance yet for spring. The most likely cause for that is that we need updated bank statements and an updated financial affidavit. So unfortunately, if you applied back in January for the fall start and you deferred, your bank statements are most likely too old for us to use for this upcoming cycle. So if you're still getting that messaging about an incomplete application, it's most likely bank documents. And if you need help with that, our student workers are happy to help you out with that. Um, you can message them on WhatsApp. I'm going to give you the number in the chat. And um, yeah, they'll help you figure out what it is um, that you're still getting those messages. Um, I just have to remember our phone number. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Um, I am also going to launch one other poll here while we talk about this. So um, we're hoping that embassies, consulates open and you all get those visa appointments. But if you're not able to secure a visa or physically get to the US, we would like to know if you'd want to start your program online. Um, this semester we have 68 students joining us online from over 20 different countries. And uh, I think so far they've been very successful. I know I have a couple in a class that I teach and they seem to be really enjoying it and saying that it helps kind of break up the day since they can't do much else with everything going on right now. All right. Still trying to find that number. <laughs> then, so we talked about the timeline. We talked about requesting your I-20. Um, should we open it up to Q&A? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. All right, so we do have questions here. If you want, you can also raise your hand and we can unmute you and we will um, surely answer your question. But the first one we have here is from Ahmed and it's been upvoted twice. Uh, it says, since I wanted to get done with my visa uh, D's form, but I don't have my CVIS ID, will the university share my CVIS ID prior to my I-20 form? So typically you do not get your CVIS ID until you've gotten your I-20, they go hand in hand. Um, if you had an I-20 that was with a fall start though, and you've deferred to spring, you will most likely keep that same CVIS ID. Um, or if you're transferring from another US institution, 
usually um, you do keep that CVIS ID. But if you're a brand new student and you haven't received an I-20 yet, um, you won't know that CVIS ID until you get your I-20. Do you have anything to add to that, JC? No, and, but if you have, um, you know, you can always just send um, an email to and just inquire about where your I-20 is in the queue. If you've submitted your I-20 request, though, you, sh you will get it before October 1st, if that helps you with your planning. Great, thank you, Ahmed, for that question. The next one that we have and has also been upvoted is, I'm pumped about receiving my I-20. We're super happy about that. <laughs> uh, but the embassy keeps postponing the opening date. So what if the embassy doesn't open till January? Do you want to take that one, JC? I do. Um, this is a really hard, hard conversation to have because I know you're eager to get here and start your program. But if you can't get here by the orientation week, um, which is January 4th, um, it's not a good idea to, to come later than that. A lot happens during orientation and um, we've set it up so that you follow all the steps so that you get registered in time and you can start your program on time and you can you know, be successful. If that happens, you'll have two choices. You'll be able to start your program part-time online from home, if that works for you, if you have the right internet connection and if, if you wanna try starting online, or you can defer to fall 2021. So if you can't get here by January 4th, then those are your options, starting part-time online or deferring to fall 21. Great. Thank you. That is a big question that we get a lot though. So thank you for asking that. Um, we have one here. So I submitted my financial affidavit and bank statement. And later I noticed that university website had a new financial affidavit uploaded where they changed the financials and scholarship name. It's been almost 19 days. I haven't received an admission decision email and my questions haven't been answered in the emails. Well, we're, first, we're really sorry that we haven't answered your questions, um, but we will do it now. So that's good. Um, so for those of you who have already applied and your application was in before those changes were made, you will be able to apply using the old documents um, and that old figure. So we're not going to make you go back and get us brand new bank statements and financial affidavit. Um, and that is also for students who deferred from fall to spring. We will also honor that last um, uh, figure that we put out there. Um, if, however, you know someone who is applying from today and onwards, they will have to show those new updated numbers. And it's only about, I think I did the math the other day, it's like $240 more. So it's not too much more, but we understand that um, it is an increase and it, it could affect some of you. JC, do you want to talk a little bit about the scholarship name change and what yeah. that is? Yeah, for sure. So some of you might be aware of a scholarship we used to have called the Cultural Contribution Scholarship. And with that came a lot of um, requirements. You used to have to do 50 contribution hours, like community service hours each year to maintain that scholarship. Well, we've changed that scholarship. We've changed its name. We've changed its eligibility requirement. So now it is called the International Maverick Scholarship. And we aren't requiring any um, experiences this year, but next year we will require six experiences for you to complete over the academic year. You keep this scholarship for the entire year um, and it's, it's changed a lot so that it's more student friendly and um, it just makes more sense. An International Maverick Scholarship makes more sense to, to students like you than maybe what, what it was previously. So um, same amount, same, same amount um, of scholarship dollars, just a little bit less um, as far as engagement requirements. You need to maintain um, a 2.5 GPA and complete 12 credits every semester and maintain your status and you get to keep that scholarship. 
If, however, you decide to start your program online from home in January, and you only take, let's say, six or seven credits, because you had intentions of coming here, um, you will still get that scholarship based on the number of credits that you're registered for. So we want you to get here, but we want to be safe, and we also want to be able to give you that scholarship. So we'll just um, stay in communication, and we'll be sure that we can award that scholarship to you as it's appropriate. Um, if you're hearing water sounds in my background, I don't know if you can hear that. It's my dog drinking water. <laughs> Ignore her. Um, all right, so I, this question is I deferred to spring and also have submitted those documents but still haven't received any information on my acceptance. When will I likely get the news? Um, yeah, so our admissions department, because they've also been working remotely, just like we have been, I think they've been getting a little bit behind. Um, saving documents to the student record system and then um, getting them to the different um, reviewers has been a little bit slower than normal. So typically we say that once your application is complete, you'll get a decision within five to seven business days. Um, I think right now it's a little bit closer to double that, so 10 to 14 business days. Um, if, though, it's been longer than that and you're still not sure, please feel free to email us at international um, at mnsu.edu with your tech ID. And that will, that when you finished your application, and we'll look into it. Um, Sometimes maybe the queue is super long, but we can see if there's a way to prioritize it. So um, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Do you have anything to add to that, JC? No, I don't think so. Perfect. Um, okay, so there's a question about the timeline for I-20. So again, we hope, well, we know that if you've submitted your request, um, already. You should have it in your inbox by October 1st, if not before. If you haven't put that request in, again, do so today and most likely you'll still get it around October 1st um, or just a little bit after that. Um, okay, so Anna has a question here. Due to COVID lockdown in Cameroon, I wish to know if my son's registration could instead be carried over to fall 2021. Great question. Do you wanna talk about deferring to fall 2021, JC? For sure. So if you've decided that you want to defer your admission to fall 2021, then you would send an email to INTL ADMT mm -hmm. at mnsu.edu and you would let them know. You would let the admissions office know that you want to defer your admission and to fall 21 and they'll respond with what you need to provide if you need to provide anything for updated documents. Um, and then we don't start issuing fall I-20s until a bit later in spring semester. So it would be another opportunity for you to wait and um, you know, just wait, wait a few more months until you'd get that updated I-20. Likely you're gonna have to show updated bank statements um, and uh, there will be some changes. I think um, there, we anticipate some tuition changes for fall semester. Those aren't announced usually until July. So um, it'll be an estimate most likely. Thank you. Um, so Wahaj has a question here. I, they say, thanks for the information. The local US Embassy Department here is very strict in offering F1 visa due to COVID. Also, the presidential declaration has made things very tricky here. Does the new I-20 form mention how important it is to attend the semester in person? I'm gonna let you take that one, mm -hmm. JC. No, our I-20 doesn't, um, doesn't mention anything about the importance of attending in person. Um, it, it really just comes down to that 
individual visa appointment with you and that officer. I know that you get 90 seconds, two minutes maybe with a visa officer to convince them of your intentions and your desire to study in the US. Um, you know, the admission letter you bring and the I-20 you bring shows the visa officer that you met the admission requirements and that, you know, we, we've invited you to come to campus. So uh, unfortunately, you know, there's not much more sway or persuasion that we have to help you with that visa appointment. Um, just be ready for, you know, to tell them and convince them why, why it's important to you to come to campus and study in person. We are offering right now this fall semester in-person classes, flex sync classes, which gives the students some flexibility on when they attend, and then also online and hybrid classes. So without knowing what spring really looks like, I anticipate our semester looking similarly. So we will have face-to-face -face classes and we will have that opportunity for you to study on campus in person. So it's helping you be able to articulate that to the visa officer. All right. Thank you, JC. All right, Carla has a question. I used to be an international student in the USA back in 2017. Then I ended my student visa and came back to Mexico to study. Now I'm trying to get my I-20 and I got an email saying something about a CVIS record, but I'm not sure what to do next. Hmm. Um, yeah. Huh. Well, if, you, if your CVIS record, if you've been out of the US for more than five months, then you start the whole process over. So if you got an email about a CVIS record, um, you'd want to probably, um, you know, respond to that email. If you have an active record, let us know. If you don't, then you're starting all over as a brand new initial student. So you'd have to pay the CVIS I-901 fee once you get your I-20. Um, you may have answered something on the I-20 request form that may have confused our processor. So, but if you do not have a current I-20 or a CVIS record, then you just submit for a brand new one. And you can, you can submit a new I-20 request if that's just easier for you to inform us of, of your intentions. Um, also, if you have, um, if it's more complicated than I'm allowing like it to seem, you can definitely send me an email and I can help you with that. My email is jacy.fry at mnsu.edu. Thank you, Alyssa, for putting that up there. Of course. And um, we also do have a staff member who does virtual advising for students. She knows um, quite a bit about immigration as well. So if you want to even set up an appointment with her, feel free to do so. Her name is Elizabeth and this link that I've put here that says outlook.office365.com and then it's a lot longer. That will bring you directly to the booking page where you can give us your information and it will allow you to book an appointment with her. She's always very happy to see all of you and get to know you. So don't be shy. That's definitely an option as well. All right, it looks like we're making a dent on the questions. Um, so Jorge says, um, days ago I was told my I-20 is processing. That's why I started to fill the DS-160 form. There's a section where I have to write the address where I'll be living in Mankato. Right now I don't have an an address yet. So uh, do I have to already have uh, an apparent to start my visa process or an address maybe? Yeah, no, you surely don't. You can use the university's address. Um, we wouldn't want you to have a, a, an apartment rented yet if you don't know if you have a visa. So just use the university address and that will be fine. And then I think when you got that email that said your I-20 is being processed, that's the automatic email you get once it's been submitted. So it is being processed. It's just probably further down in the queue. Um, so if we couldn't apply using the I-20, can we use our tourist visa if we have one using COVID as a reason? 
I'm going to let you take that one too. Jason. Yeah. So that's tricky um, because a B visa is not for study. A B visa is for business or tourism and just visiting. Um, so I would say, no, you can't study on a B visa. Um, we have had students, I think, maybe take a class because it's incidental to the reason they're in the U.S. So um, I would not advise in um, studying on a B visa, especially if you have intentions of getting a degree here on an F visa. So I would say, you know, be patient. And if you could start your program online while you're waiting to get that F visa, that might be a better option for you. Okay, so believe as uh, suppose the status quo remains about the COVID pandemic effect on travel restrictions and I decide to take classes online by spring 2021, will I still be liable to pay the mandatory international student health insurance? Nope. 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 We even have current students who are maybe in their third year who are home studying because of COVID and they don't pay the insurance. You only have to pay it if your boots are on the ground, if you are here physically in the U.S. That's a good question though, because yeah. we know that's a lot of money and if you can't even use it, yeah, we're not going to make you get it. Um, this is a good question. I get this one a lot too. So when I deferred to spring, I received an email saying I only needed to submit my financial documents since I was already accepted. After I submitted my financial documents, I keep receiving emails saying my application was incomplete and I also didn't receive any decision. So our system is set up to encourage students to finish their application. It doesn't unfortunately take into account students in your position that have actually finished it, have deferred, you just needed those two pieces. So you're getting automated messages that are just trying to encourage you to complete that application. Um, it sounds like everything is in. You're probably in line to be reviewed and soon you'll get that new acceptance letter. Once you get that, those emails will stop. So feel free to ignore. Some of them, though, I will say have some good videos for you to watch with some tips, um, information about our university. So you might still want to pay attention and see what you can learn from them. Um, okay, so Andy says, please explain this question's answer once more. The U.S. Embassy in our country has not opened yet. So what if the embassy stays closed until spring 2021 intake? So in that case, you'd have a couple of options. You would be able to decide to study online with us. You could do that part-time from home, or you could defer your application once more to fall 2021. Um, so those are your options. Uh, am I missing anything with that, JC? I don't think so. Okay. All right. And once more again, if they do defer to fall 2021, will they still get their I-20 in one to two weeks or will it be longer? Mm -hmm. I think you yeah. said the timeline, yeah. Yeah, it will be a bit longer. We aren't going to start processing I-20s for fall semester until probably, I don't know, into the early middle part of spring semester. So it would just be another, another opportunity to test our patients. <laughs> <laughs> Nana asks if she can wait until arrival to book housing. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't recommend that you wait until you're here, you know, to book mm -hmm. your housing, but you can wait until you're, you know for sure that you have that visa and you have flight arrangements here. Do you have anything else to add to that, JC? Um, I would say, you know, if you know someone that's already attending here, they might be able to give you some pointers on um, places to look for off-campus housing. On-campus housing is always an option. Um, it does fill up though, so if you are considering on-campus housing, I would um, put in your room reservation earlier than when you get here. 
We have a question about being able to communicate with other students and if there will be an issue. Um, I'm going to take this time actually to launch our last poll, which talks about other sessions that we would like to offer to you all before coming to help you out before getting here. Um, but communication with other students, I think, is something that's pretty easy. You'll have a university email account that you can use. Once you're in classes, there's also um, the D2L platform, the online learning platform. There are a lot of different options to get involved in different campus clubs and organizations that will help you find friends. And most students who are here have fellow students from their home country and they usually really help you out and kind of take you under their wing. So I haven't really heard of too many students having issues like that. Um, maybe JC, you have something to add though? Yeah, so depending on where you're from, you know, we've got all these different organizations. They're called RSOs on our campus, registered student organizations. And some countries have their own, some regions, some continents have their own. So um, we've got like the African Student Association, we've got NESTCOM, which stands for Nepali Student um, Club. So um, I know that they're very active and they oftentimes know about new incoming students, maybe before we do. So if that's something you're interested in connecting with before getting here, you can definitely send like um, international at mnsu.edu an email and, t and let us know, um, you know, where you're a new student, where you're coming from. And we can connect you to that club or organization so that you're able to connect with someone from your home country before getting here. Um, and, you know, we've also got um, global, Maverick Global Ambassadors on um, our staff that we can connect you with, too, if you've got questions about, you want to ask another student, how, you know, if you've got student questions. So I feel like if you let us know what you need, we can probably connect you with the right club or the right group of people or even the right student. Definitely. Um, we also have a question about, is the atmosphere friendly here? Um, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think our students are amazing. Um, they do awesome things on campus and they're always willing to help out their fellow students and friends. Um, one thing about our universities, our faculty are super dedicated to you all. They're teaching faculty. They will be the ones in the classroom with you. And so you'll find that they're willing to help you and they want you here and our staff as well. You'll love our staff. <laughs> wow, we only have one more question, JC. We wow. made it through, yeah. So um, I still have to get my visa and should get done with my medicals for my pilot course. So I think it may take time. Can I join online classes until I come to the US? That's a great question. And the answer is yes. Um, we do always need to let you know though that it's not a guarantee you're going to get a visa. So um, I think it, it informs the visa officer that you are serious about studying at MSU. This, um, if you bring your transcript and your course schedule showing them that you've already started, um, I think that that would be an added bonus for you at your appointment. But if you can't get here, online study and starting your program is definitely an option. All right. Those were some awesome question, questions. And I think it was probably good for you to be able to ask them and get a staff member to answer them right away. Um, yeah, I just want to say I'm really happy that all of you could make it this morning. We are always here to help you though. So please don't be shy. Um, my email address, I'm going to put it here as well. So if you want to get in touch with me directly, please feel free to email me. Um, and JC's email is there as well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we're just happy that you're excited to come to campus. We do want you here. We'll try and offer some other opportunities for you to learn about the campus before you get here. Um, and the recording will be available. I'll send it out to everyone by the end of
the business day here in Minnesota. So do you have any final words, JC? No, I'm super happy you were all able to join. You asked incredible questions and I think you probably helped out your fellow students on this call too, because maybe if you asked a question they were afraid to ask. Um, like Alyssa said, we are going to try and connect with you a couple more times before January. So um, we're gonna consider the questions you've asked, the way you've answered those polls and keep coming up with different ideas on how we can connect with you. So you can always send us emails um, if you have questions or ideas on a, maybe another webinar that we could host. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you again soon. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy your weekend, everyone. And yeah, we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye-bye.